And this is not about paranoia, but honestly, look at the world around you. Look at the things happening. Taking advantage uh, of our open borders. The number of Chinese illegal migrants crossing the border is surging. This is coming as a new report reveals Chinese nationals have breached U.S. military sites at least 100 times in recent years. Our top priority is to keep terrorists and their weapons from entering the United States. The last 34 months, we've had 1.6 million known Godaways. How many known terrorists or how many special interest aliens have entered the United States? To me, it's not a matter of if the threat gets here. I believe the threat's already here. And it's a very good idea to be prepared uh, with a rifle that is capable for your situation. So if you haven't figured it out lately, or if you've been hiding under a rock for the last several years, uh, you're going to need a rifle. And you might be late to the party if you don't have that rifle right now. But I would suggest, while you still can, uh, go out and get yourself a rifle. And not just any rifle that you keep in the box, the sporting AR-15 rifle, and then you throw it in the safe, and you never think about it again. But you want to have a capable rifle, and you want to be capable with that rifle. So it goes without saying, yes, set your rifle up, and that's what we're going to talk about today is having a uh, survival-ready or battle-ready rifle. And what that means as far as a setup goes, it can look like different things to a lot of different people. I'm just going to tell you what I have done. I am not a rifle expert, and I do not play a rifle expert on YouTube. Uh, but I do want to talk to you about the rifle that I use every single day. Uh, and why it's set up the way it's set up and you might want to use some of those things you may have better thoughts yourself and if you do have better thoughts yourself please put them in the comments below uh, that's how we can grow together and learn together and this is not about paranoia but honestly look at the world around you look at the things happening and it's a very good idea to be prepared uh, with a rifle that is capable for your situation if you live in an urban setting, you may need a little bit different setup than I have. Uh, several years ago, my family and I, we uh, moved from more urban setting out to uh, a bunch of acres, or what we consider a bunch of acres, out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I need a rifle every single day, mostly for predator control. But I would be comfortable using this rifle to protect myself uh, and to protect my family uh, from other threats, not just predators uh, uh, on our little farm, homestead, whatever you want to call it. And that's what I want to run through with you today is uh, how this thing is set up. Uh, but before I get into the rifle specifics, I do want to mention one accessory uh, that I've picked up. And it has proven uh, to be my go-to uh, stabilization shooting stick uh, bipod combination. And that's what's so cool about it. This is called the AccuPod. Uh, and you can see that at their website. I'm going to link it up here. And I'm going to link it down in the description below. Uh, I don't have any interest in the company. I do not. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. I just saw this product and uh, it has turned out to be uh, an excellent accessory for my rifle in those situations where I need stabilization and um, the prone position is not going to get it or shouldering the weapon is not going to get it or sitting and shouldering the weapon is not going to get it, or propping it across my four-wheeler or something like that is not going to get the job done. Uh, this AccuPod has been very, very helpful. I'm going to do an in-depth review in a different video, but so look for uh, that video. I'm going to let you know. I've been using it for several months now in different situations and scenarios, uh, and it excels at stabilization and versatility uh, and uh, man, this thing is bomb proof and that's what I like about it. And the better thing is made in the USA. So I wanted to mention that to you uh, before I get into the specifics of the rifle. The basic rifle is just a Faxon Ascent AR-15. It's chambered in 5.56. Obviously it will shoot 223 also. And I picked it up for around 750 bucks, free shipping online from Primary Arms. Uh, and that was several years ago. I don't know what they're going for now. Uh, but you can pick up a decent rifle uh, that will do the job for somewhere in that price range. And then I started adding things to it slowly over time, and I learned some stuff, and that's what I want to talk, talk to you about, is a battle-ready rifle uh, is one that is durable, uh, that it functions, and you can rely on it to function, but it's durable, and it'll withstand banging around, being thrown around, uh, dust and debris and water and things like that. Uh, that you can rely on that platform to continue to function as you need it. And again, I use this every day, mostly for predator control. Uh, but it's dusty and dirty, you can see. 
and uh, it's reliable. It's proven reliable. I swapped out. I'm going through these in no particular order. I'm just telling you how my rifle is uh, set up uh, the way I like it and um, why I have it the way that I have it. I took the standard pistol grip off uh, just to get something more ergonomic. And then I took the buttstock uh, off just to get uh, something a little more comfortable. And then with some um, uh, quick release QD mounts for a sling. QD mounts uh, were very important to me. And I wanted the ability to have uh, a QD mount there. That stands for quick detach if you're completely new. Uh, to rifles and to the nomenclature it is a quick de detach point where you can attach a sling and uh, this rifle has a quick quick detach point there on the buttstock I mounted one there I think I just got this off of Amazon because I wanted a midway uh, up the rail there up the handguard I wanted a midpoint uh, for a quick detach it had one factory uh, in the handguard that came with this ascent and uh, that was a little too far for me I like it uh, right there if I had to put it really tight to my body, um, I would probably also use that as well. If I had to climb over some obstacles or something like that, I would use that. But this uh, quick detach point right here midway, it serves uh, the purpose uh, for most of the stuff that I need, which is just essentially carrying the rifle around in this position. Sometimes I do have to uh, sling it on my back in this position like that. Uh, but mostly I keep it in the forward position as I walk around or uh, do the different chores that I need to do or just um, I run around a patrol at night in the dark because that's when most of the predators come out uh, from sundown through, uh, you know, the middle of the night into the morning. And so I patrol around to uh, protect the animals that we have and uh, kill off the predators and try to keep them at bay because there's a bunch of them around. At any rate, uh, a good sling um you don't have to change out obviously uh, it's just what you're comfortable with and what you're able to afford uh, but get your an affordable option out there and so these are larue tactical uh, the sling is blue force gear i'm pretty sure yep blue force gear made in the usa uh, vickers uh, combat application sling is the sling that i have uh, and the reason i like that is it's um it's a different nylon webbing. Uh, it's more of a, uh, I don't want to say rough. I don't know. It just feels like a more durable, a little bit thicker, but it's still lightweight nylon webbing. Um, but then it has this quick adjustment down there that functions better than some of the other slings uh, that I've had. And I can move that uh, quickly if I need to, get out of it, be able to uh, bring it up to the shoulder and aim it, get back into it, tighten it down. Uh, move if I need to, use hands if I need to, to do other things. Uh, so I like that. So it's not only uh, a good survival application sling, it's a good combat application sling also. A sling is uh, something you definitely want on your rifle. So uh, sling would be the first thing. The rifle obviously is the first thing. Ammunition would be the second thing. Make sure you have uh, ammo on hand and magazines on hand for your rifle. You can see I have... Um, uh, many magazines uh, just hanging around kind of everywhere. Um, some loaded up, some in plate carriers, uh, some on the wall, some in the safe, uh, some in the gun. Uh, I have magazines around everywhere. So you want to have uh, ammo around and you want to have magazines around. If you haven't, uh, if you have no idea about how much ammo you should have on hand, um, you can check um, in the description below, I did an ammo video uh, to tell you basically a formula that you might want to have on hand, uh, a basic way to figure that out. We've got to use a starting point somewhere. I'll link that uh, up here in this card and then down in the description below. That's an ammo video if you're not sure. But you want to have ammo on hand as well as your rifle. So along with uh, ammo, rifle, um, I just activated light. So let's talk about the light. Um, you want to have a good white light. Um, there are other aiming options. They're very expensive. I'm assuming most of us out there, uh, it's not in the budget uh, to go out and get a couple thousand dollars worth of aiming solutions, uh, light-wise, IR or otherwise. So a white light. Uh, and again, I went with Streamlight. I've had um, very good experience with Streamlight products. This is the ProTac, and it does have the um, uh, remote switch capability on it, so you can switch it on you can switch it off momentary 
and then it also has strobe as well. Uh, this has held up very, very well over the last uh, four years I've had it on this rifle. Over the last two years I've been using this rifle just about every day. Throwing it on a four-wheeler, um, just running around with it, throwing it in the dirt, throwing it in the, the chicken coop, throwing it in the goat pen, uh, taking it out to food plots when I build them, uh, running around on the four-wheeler rack, shaking it around like crazy. And I've had uh, great luck with that light. It has a rechargeable battery in it uh, also, and I've had really great luck with those uh, rechargeable batteries as well. So that's a Streamlight Protec. Surefire makes some good stuff. I'm sure there's other good stuff out there. Uh, that's just the one I use, but you wanna have a good white light that is going to uh, last the test of time. You need that to um, uh, light up stuff at night and to be able to see that uh, through your optic or uh, through your sights so that you can make an accurate shot, but most importantly, that you can identify the target. You know, we have uh, a little cat and the little cat runs around the farm uh, and uh, cat eyes and um, small fox eyes and bobcat eyes and uh, raccoon eyes, they look a lot alike in stature at night. And if I don't have a bright white light, uh, to light them up, I don't want to shoot the cat. Kids wouldn't be happy, mama wouldn't be happy, I wouldn't be happy, I love the little cat. So uh, you need to have a light to light up your target. Uh, at any rate, uh, going on from there, uh, I also have this little ergonomic foregrip that comes, uh, I bought that along with the uh, LaRue um, pistol grip and the LaRue stock. I got a really, really good deal on those. I don't even think I should have gotten that deal. I'm talking like they were a couple bucks. They're definitely not a couple bucks on their website now, but I picked them up for a couple bucks. But I like this because you want to be able to pull that rifle into your shoulder uh, when uh, you're shooting that rifle. And that allows me minimal minimal platform. I don't like the big uh, grips that stick down like that. And I don't like the huge angled grips. If you like those, cool. Uh, if you use something different, you know, that's great too. Uh, I just like just enough to get a grip and to be able to pull that snug uh, back into my shoulder uh, to get a good uh, firing grip on the gun and some stability. And so I just use that uh, minimal thing there. Uh, on the light cord, you can see, I'm just going back and forth because it's just my rifle setup. I didn't plan the video really. I'm just talking about it to you uh, because I think it's important right now that you have a rifle and you have it set up. I just use some zip ties along the grip from the light cable uh, to the pressure switch and that uh, works really well. I've had that on for several years and they haven't come off. So zip ties are awesome. Every man should have a bag of zip ties uh, in their uh, go kit <laughs> or their home kit. Every man should have a bag of zip ties in their vehicle, at their house, uh, at work if you have to. Zip ties are just uh, awesome. At any rate, the next thing I want to talk to you about uh, is the scope on this. And I have it on a LaRue uh, quick or QD quick detach mount. You just uh, pop those levers and that comes right off. And that way I can use my uh, secondary sights, which are Magpul uh, backup sights. I thought about getting some more, uh, some metal sights. I'm not uh, crazy about polymer, but Magpul makes some good uh, polymer sights and these have held up and they have stayed, um, they've stayed true and uh, I practice with them every once in a while and they have straight stayed uh, zeroed if you want to call it that. They have stayed true and uh, I'm happy with them. So they work for backup sight solution. Uh, the Trigicon scope is brand new to me. I'm um, still getting used to it. That is a Trigicon Credo HX 1 to 8, 28 millimeter. And that replaced uh, this piece of junk right here, which is a Burris RT6. So I cannot stress this enough to you that um, I paid about a thousand bucks for that. I paid more than the rifle, uh, paid more for the optic than I did the rifle. Uh, but it functions as uh, it's an LPVO. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, that means low powered variable optic. And so on one, it's a one to eight power. On one, it functions like a red dot. And so I look through that and uh, I can both eyes open. I can look just like I would through a red dot and it's great for close up work. And then if I need to um, magnify, I have uh, power that I can magnify and then it functions 
uh, like a medium, uh, short to medium range uh, scope, which will take you out to uh, several hundred yards comfortably uh, with the magnification, at least with my eyes. I'm 52 years old and I have an astigmatism and uh, my eyes are uh, getting worse every day, but this uh, does what I need it to do uh, for the ranges that I need it to do. I'm comfortable out to uh, uh, 300 yards on say a man sized target with this. I'm comfortable out to 150, uh, probably 150, 200 on an animal sized target uh, with this right now. I'm getting more comfortable with it uh, as I learn it. But again, I've just had this uh, Trigicon and I'll probably do an update on that. But it replaced this Burris RT6 LPVO. And this Burris. Uh, it failed on me. I had it on there for probably two years. I really started shooting it over that last year of that two-year period, uh, using it and uh, using it on a very frequent basis. And one day when I was messing around with different uh, sight and yardages, all of a sudden it just went off the paper. So I verified the mount, I verified the gun independently, and it was the scope. Uh, where it was not reliable anymore and so it was a budget scope at 300 bucks and so I would say to you out of everything in this video that's most important uh, if you sink your money into something sink your money into that um, that optic or the scope uh, I would tell you hey if you just get very good iron sights if that's all you can afford get the best iron sights that you can afford uh, don't skimp on the optic, don't skip, skimp on the scope uh, because you don't want to need a precision shot uh, and not be able to make a precision shot or think you're making one worse and hit something that you do not want to hit, especially if you need this uh, uh, for home defense uh, or mob defense or uh, if you need a battle ready rifle, you want to be able to take the shots uh, that you believe you're taking when you look through your scope. So uh, that is a Trigicon, and I did put a lot of money into that because uh, I needed an aiming solution that worked. Now, I did have an aim point uh, patrol rifle optic on there, and this is an awesome sight, and this is a fairly inexpensive sight. However, uh, this has no magnification, so I thought about a magnifier, but by the time I would have bought a magnifier to go along with this, I was at or above the price that I paid for uh, the Trigicon. So I went with the LPVO because uh, one unit as opposed to two units, rail space is smaller as opposed to more rail real estate that I had to put a magnifier on or I would have had to put a magnifier on with the aim point. And the aim point can serve as a uh, backup or go on a uh, another rifle build that I have planned for the future. So in a nutshell, uh, that is what you want uh, to have a, what I consider a battle-ready rifle. You want to have the rifle itself. You want it set up ergonomically and comfortably where uh, you could carry it all day and use it all day if you need to. You want to have a good sling on the gun. Uh, you want to have a good white light on the gun. You want to have some good backup sights, but you want to have a great primary sight or a primary scope on it also. And then you want to have plenty of magazines and plenty of ammo. And you should have a battle ready uh, option that you can go to uh, if you need it. We pray that we don't need it, but if we do need it, we do have it. Uh, so again, get a rifle, but don't just get a rifle. Know how to use that rifle and set that rifle up for you and for your most likely situation or scenarios that you would use it in. And you will be uh, more prepared for the future uh, for uh, protecting yourself and protecting those that you love. Thank you again for watching this video. As always, God bless you and yours.